guys, how's it going? So it's feeling like fall here in Eastern Oregon. Like we're getting some really beautiful colors coming out on the trees and the temperatures are much lower. In fact, we just did a video where I had to bundle up in a really thick coat because it was 35 degrees out when we started to film. But tonight it's supposed to drop down to 28 degrees. So today's project is to run around the garden and gather up any plants that are too tender to handle any uh, temperature below freezing. Um, and it's a pretty easy process. It just takes a little bit of time. So I just wanted to show you. I've got some really pretty things and I'll give you a little tour of my plant room where I hold over plants um, that I use in projects or that are waiting to be used in projects. And then um, also plants that need a lot of light because I've got some grow lights in there. So the first thing I need to do is just go gather up a couple of things out of the barn. So I've got my garden cart and my insecticide, which I think, let me show it to you. I left my pruners inside, so I'll have to run and get those. But I've talked about this before. It's called Midex. Uh, active ingredients are cottonseed oil, clove oil, and garlic oil. So natural stuff. It doesn't smell bad. In fact, the clove oil actually makes it smell kind of good. It um, maybe counteracts the garlic a little bit. Uh, but mainly, so it controls mites, thrips, and aphids. I think there's some other things on the list. Um, but mites and aphids are actually the two biggest pests that we deal with outside in our garden. So they're really the only two that I'm worried about. And I won't spray anything that looks like it doesn't have anything at all. Especially the citrus trees I'm about to show you because they're loaded with fruit. So several of the plants that I need to bring inside are actually in the gazebo. I've got some that will stay. So there's, you know, hardy grass, there's Japanese maple, I'll probably move into the greenhouse. But I've got a Eugenia topiary here that'll come in, a Boston fern, a couple, let's see, there's a lemon tree over there and there. And then in this corner, we've got another Eugenia topiary, looking beautiful, and my lime tree. Let me count quick how many limes are on this tree. Five, six, seven, eight. There are 12 limes on this tree. And it's looking pretty good. Like it's looking a little bit dusty, so I'll probably give it a little bath with a hose um, just to clean the dust off of its leaves so I don't have to use any leaf shine. But there's no insect problem with these leaves are spick and span um, and I will kind of um, remove any debris that's on top of the soil that's a good idea to do but I won't do that until I've got them on my garden cart so in this corner I've got another Boston fern I'll take inside but then I've got this wonderful Meyer lemon and it's really looking good again just a little bit of water spotting and dust but no bugs at all and let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine nine lemons on this little plant. I just planted all of these citrus this spring. And then this lemon tree right here, this one's called a pink lemonade lemon. So look at that. You can actually buy these in little bags at the store. I've seen them, but I'm so excited to be growing one. And these look like they're a little bit further along in their maturity. Here's another. I don't think there's as many on this tree. There's one, two, three, four, five, six seven a weird one I don't eight no seven yeah this one's this one's kind of weird I don't know what that's all about with the horns so I'm gonna see what I can fit onto the cart by myself I might have to get Aaron out here to help me lift I'm gonna have to come back for a second load. I wasn't able to get, I could have fit everything onto this cart, but I think it would have been way too heavy. I did remember though that you could take the sides off, so I did that so I could fit a little bit more, but I got both Eugenia's, both ferns, and two of the citrus. I'm trying to go super slow and gently with this load, mostly because of those Eugenia's. I'd probably be better off just hand delivering those to their spots. A little top heavy. Actually, this might be a really good location to line up my plants and get them all washed off. There's lots of room, it's in the shade. I think I'll just do my cleaning here and there is a hose right there. It's kind of perfect, need my pruners. So with the Eugenias, I'm gonna use my clippers just to trim up the topiary form a little bit. And I would be worried about them if I was gonna be leaving them out. Um, but these are gonna go on the front sun porch for a little while so they won't be exposed to any extreme cold so I shouldn't get any like tip damage. Um, from doing any trimming this late. I'm also gonna make sure they're really well watered, but again, I don't see any bug issues going on. 
So I don't think I need to spray any of these plants. The Boston ferns, though, will need a lot of grooming. This underside is always just looking pretty bad. All right, I got them all groomed up and kind of separated and now I'm going to give them a little bath with the hose and make sure that they're all watered really well before I take them in. Well, that's a really nice looking bunch of things. Don't you think? I'm gonna let them sit here and dry off for a little bit. And really not a lot came off of them. That's my little pile right there. Most of which is trimmings from the Eugenia and a little bit of uh, like dead leaves and things from underneath the Boston Ivies. Everything always looks so fresh when it gets a little shower. So I'm gonna leave those right there so that they have a chance to dry. And I just have, I think one other thing I need to grab from out here. I think these are the only tender succulents I have outside right now. This is the mounded arrangement that I planted up a few months ago. Everything's doing really well, so well in fact. I might need to take some cuttings off of the lemon coral sedum because it is trying to just grow through the whole container. But look at how nice they all look. So we are gonna grab this one and actually just haul it right upstairs because I watered this one a couple of days ago and it doesn't need, it doesn't look like it has any kind of bugs or the need to be uh, hosed down for any reason. And then I've got a few mangaves up in the front sun porch that I'm gonna take up to the plant room. So all of those things will head up that direction while everything else is drying. So right up here I have just a small collection of mangaves that actually desperately need water. Um, so we're gonna take this one and those upstairs, it's gonna take a couple of trips. All right, so I got all the mangaves and the succulent bowl up here. Now I'll give you a little tour of everything I've got currently. So when we moved in, I thought that this room would probably be the most natural one to put plants in just because of all of the light that already comes in. This is a western facing window. There is a big juniper there, so it does protect this room from any beating hot sun, but it's usually really bright. Uh, and we didn't have enough furniture to put in here anyway when we moved in, so it seemed kind of perfect. We just started slowly adding grow lights. This is the least amount of plants I've ever had in this room, believe it or not. Usually every single shelf is full. I have a whole shelf here that has nothing in it, just some supplies. And this shelf has nothing, neither does that one, and that plant shelf only has three plants. But it feels really manageable right now, and it'll get fuller as the winter progresses. So I'll just give you a little tour of all the shelves. I probably won't go plant by plant just because that would take forever. Uh, this is the bamboo LED grow light system from Gardener Supply that we assembled in our bedroom, have since moved it in here. Every light in here, by the way, is LED every single light. So we're not utilizing very much energy, which is really nice. I've got supplies on the top shelf. We've got all the different kinds of soil mix and there's some rocks up there. Um, on the top shelf here, some of the new succulents from Little Prince, they're looking happy. Ruby Cascade, Peperomia, and a few other new house plants I just picked up. Aloe plant in the back. Second shelf down. These are a couple of holding trays, that's what I call them. This is just an 11 by 22 like seed starting tray. No drainage, but I find them very effective for rooting succulents. And some of these are very rooted and ready to go. Some of them I just recently cut and they need to form roots, but it's just so nice to have a bunch of different ones to choose from. I can pluck out what I need when I need it and it eliminates needing to have like a million little pots hanging out. But there's some nice plants on this. Um, shelf. The next shelf over is a bunch of supplies, random containers. This one could stand some organizing. Uh, different types of moss up on the top to top dress my soil. Lots of supplies here in the corner as well. These are a couple ones I just moved in. I did give them some water, poor things. There's an aloe on the right and a mangave on the left. And we've got my most commonly used tools up here. My snips are the number one most used. This is number two. 
my large syringe for watering. You can see I just got done using it. Um, this, this is also really nice. It's like a nose bulb thing, but it blows air or it, like, yeah, it blows air, which blows soil off of plants without having to touch it. This little brush I use a lot too. This is a lens brush. It's really soft and I can brush soil off of succulents. And then other just random things. You guys know how things just kind of collect, but I've got some shine, leaf shine spray and some other insecticide. On this shelf here, I have my hose. This is how I water. So I sling the hose out of this window. It goes down two stories and hooks to my frost free outside. And then I have live running water up here and it makes watering so much easier. Otherwise I would have to carry a water jug up here a whole bunch of times to water all these plants, which just, it was taking too long. So that was my solution for now until I can get this room plumbed one day. Here are a few of the mangaves I just moved up and my succulent bowl. It should be very happy under all this light. This is another holding tray here, or it's a pot. <laughs> it's a pretty pot, but those are all cuttings and some other like little things, some aloes and cacti. Some of these plants I've had for a really long time. I'll just go slow here so you can see. I think I missed this one when I was watering last. See those puckered leaves? That happens every once in a while. I gave it a little bit of water today. It should be fine. There's some really pretty color and texture here. This aloe in the back I've had in this pot for a long time, like since we moved in. Three years? Three and a half years? This shelf here, I have some other supplies. There's a little, like tabletop light system. There are some of the mangaves I brought up today. Uh, agave that I actually took this as a pup off of an agave I had that was not doing well. So I'm super happy to have that and it's looking great. Then a couple of just mishmash, like nothing up here is actually planted to stay because these are all going to be used in projects eventually. Except for this one. This is a project. So you might remember this. I planted up this uh, no draining kind of terrarium. There's a top that goes to it. I took the top off and just brought it up here because uh, I was rearranging house plants and decided to give it a little bit of strong light for a while. It should be happy, but these plants have been in here for getting close to two years and they're doing great. Really pretty agave, a blue elf aloe back there, and then just some other things. I also wanted to point out the fact that this floor is carpet, which is so not ideal when you're dealing with dirt and leaves and just plant debris in general. But honestly, for having this plant room in here for three and a half years, just about, it's looking pretty darn good. This is where I do all of my repotting and just work on random stuff. So every time I get done, I just vacuum the floors up and make sure I don't walk on anything too much so it doesn't get ground in. And then I did put some plastic down. I've taken it up on this side since because these light systems, these are the three tier LED, um, Sunlight, I think, grow systems from Gardener Supply. They have these nice big trays that catch everything. So I didn't find it necessary to have any floor protection. I mean, I, I suppose that would help in a, in a pinch if you accidentally got too wild, but so far, so good. Anyway, that's my little holding room for plants. It works really well for us. So that's pretty much all I have to do inside. That's the fewest amount of plants I've ever had to bring in, which is kind of nice. Usually I am like in a mad dash panic trying to move everything in. And I know you guys know what that's like. You've been there probably. I did grab some saucers while I was inside and I'm back in the sun porch. This is where all of the plants from outside, like the citrus and the um, ferns, all of those things I cleaned up, they're gonna live in here for a couple of weeks and acclimate to being a little bit warmer, a little less airflow a little less light before I take them inside. And that way they won't maybe shock quite as bad because for me, I don't know about you guys, but when I move citrus around, they tend to want to shock and drop leaves. Um, they usually rebound, but I'm hoping by transitioning them slowly, it won't happen quite as much. And Boston ferns, ferns are like a toss up for me. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Inside, we're so dry naturally anyway, and we heat with wood. Inside, I've got one actually. I don't know if you can see inside that window right there. I've had that one in here since this winter and it's living and it's looking good. So I'm gonna try to emulate what I'm doing with that one, but they're gonna start off in here first. Anyway, let me go get everything. Stop off at the Gomfrina. The butterfly is beautiful.
my goodness, you guys, it is so pretty with plants in here. Like it looks so abundant and beautiful and cozy. And I think the plants will be very happy in here for their little two or three week acclimation period. So, okay, we'll start here on the left. We've got the lime tree and then the lemon right below it. Then we've got the two Eugenia topiaries up here on the little bench that I had the mangaves on. The two ferns, and I did find two more ferns in the greenhouse that I completely forgot about. And there's the pink lemonade lemon. Looks so pretty right there, like the perfect height. And then there is the last fern. Oh, it just feels so, I just, I don't even know. I just love it. Whew, that last part got me all hot. It is pretty warm in here. And wrestling those big citrus trees is no joke. I had Aaron come out here and help me lift them up the set of stairs up to this porch area because I can get them on the cart like one lift is okay, but moving them any further than that is just not smart, I don't think. So we got them all placed and it just feels so great in here. I just love it. And I hope that seeing the process was helpful to you guys. Again, it is super uncomplicated. Um, very few steps, just gather everything up, water it, groom it, make sure it doesn't have bugs, and then acclimate it if you can. Um, and then slowly like introduce it into warmer temperatures and then take it inside and give it as much light as you possibly can. Even for lower light loving plants in the winter time, they do prefer to be by a bright window if you can swing it at all, or grow lights also work. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.